All right, we are live for the Friday edition of the Mike and Mario Show. Excited to be back. Uh, Looking forward to connecting. And, of course, it has been a hectic week, to say the least. But I'm excited to be back with you, Mario. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. And, uh, I mean, there's so much happening out there that it's really hard to keep up with everything. But I'm doing well. I'm keeping my hat down. Billy is Mm -hmm. keeping his hat down. He's guarding his silver uh, (laughs) safely as well that's good man that's good so yeah uh that, and, and so one of the biggest things on my end is just trying to you know as i say filter through the noise so this week has been a challenge because you know it, it seems like everyone is sh- like you know content overload in a sense of everyone sharing their perspective or opinions video footage on the ground could it be old new i put up all types of clips that showed or revealed that a lot of the horror stories coming out from the mainstream news are older photos and things like that. So it's like, it's hard to really read through what's happening, but I did the best mm-hmm. I could, but uh, let's just, I guess, kick off back to the front of the week uh, and talking about the continuous bombardment of sanctions and how slowly but surely uh, the Western powers that be are trying to suffocate Russia and some of the devastation and stuff like that. But let's get into China, the, 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 the current, I guess, alleged threat on China. If they happen to, uh, assist russia in any capacity you know do you think this is going to be like a defining moment for that whole russian uh, chinese relations or or what what do you think yes uh that that story came out on bloomberg and uh i mean it's on zero hedge there but it's a bloomberg story and it's from the state department Uh, they're trying to uh scare the chinese and, and the story says that the chinese might have to think twice about helping uh the russians Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be so, but uh, yes, I, I think it's quite serious. And the other thing I, I've seen lately is that uh, people are putting a bouncy on Putin's head. <laughs> really? oh, and uh, I, I think even Mike Pompeo did the same. Right. And uh, you know, what would uh, Xi Jinping think uh, you know, about that? And, and I think Mike Pompeo also, I don't know if he was the one who, who said to put the you know, the bounty on, on Putin's head, but someone did. But what mm-hmm. Mike Pompeo said as well, and it seems to be a provocation, is that uh, the U.S. should recognize, diplomatically recognize Taiwan or the Republic of China. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's like poking uh, the Chinese dragon, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's almost like saying uh, prior to the crisis now it was like uh, Europe wanting or the West wanting NATO to go into Ukraine. You know, mm-hmm. those are the two defining problems, NATO and uh, NATO in the Ukraine and the Chinese, uh, you know, the CCP or the, the People's Republic of China wanting to eventually get the, the rogue province that Taiwan is, technically it, it is. It used yeah. to be part of China. So those right. are the two points. Uh, yeah, so that article is interesting. Maybe China might. It, it talks about how a lot of Chinese banks are dependent on the dollar system, so mm-hmm. they, they could hold off, and how uh, the Chinese have also uh, respected sanctions that the U.S. put on Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I read something as well from Pepe Escobar, who's a, a really good a geopolitical uh, analyst. Mm-hmm. He, he analyzes uh, politics, economics, uh, a v- very uh, interesting guy. And yeah. I think he's based out of Asia. And he's talking about the fact that he thinks Russia and China have a lot more up their sleeves. Uh, so it's like a, a little counter. I don't think he saw that article on Bloomberg, maybe. But uh, yeah. it's basically, you no. Know, uh, the Chinese and, and Russians have a lot of uh, tools. And mm-hmm. at the end of the article, I mean, you might want to put that in the description for the uh, yeah. for the view. It's a long we'll article. Yeah. As actually one of the weapons uh, Russia might use is to pass a, a law in Russia that uh, doesn't recognize uh, American uh, patents. Mm. And that would mean that Russian companies could copy technology, pharmaceuticals, everything. And it could be a huge dent on the U.S. economy. So there you go. Yeah. Am I defending, Am I saying they should do that? No, uh, we're just observing here. Some people right. 
listen to what we say and say, oh, you're pro this and that. No, we're just observing. Right. And 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 at this current moment, I don't think it's uh, you know, uh uh we're for or against. We're literally trying to get to the to the tr to the bottom of the truth because once again, everything that we're being presented with has an agenda behind it. And when you continuously see the the concerted effort by every nation in all capacity, it seems like, you know, I saw they're going to the boy, uh, the software industry is, is, is uh, no longer supporting Russian or American or anything that's, you know, foreign or Russia's support line. That they're cutting off all the repair for, you know, plane ship. I mean, they're literally they're hit. They're trying to stick it to them bad. And ultimately, they're, they're trying to isolate, as I mentioned, suffocate Russia. But here's my thing where I don't think um, it, it's going to be that effective is because over the last 10 years, China and Russia relations have gone grown so strong and they've already cut on the pipelines of energy that flows from the north down to the south to China. And do you think for one second, you know, they're going to let they're going to cease those operations because they're already doing the little bilateral stuff and currency swaps. So they already got a nice little slush fund on both sides, probably to accommodate which could probably buy them some time, maybe six, eight, you know, a year. But then again, the, we need relatively cheaper oil. So I believe the oil game will end up being the deciding factor as to how much uh, the world continues to go along with the, the Western's agenda to suffocate uh, uh, Russia because they're sitting on something very large and they're in partnership with the OPEC nation. So, you know, no oil, no, no agenda. So time will tell. But uh yeah, lots of stuff uh, unfolding. And uh, for those tuning in, uh, definitely throw out some questions, some thoughts. We'll definitely jump on it and uh, share our two cents on it. But let's keep it moving right along. And so on top of yeah. the continuous uh, ramp, uh, ramping up of sanctions, here's a little article here that uh, looks like as of yesterday, uh, the U.S. continue to pass more sanctions on individual families, their spouses, their children, all the way down to you know basically the unborn as of now but uh do you think uh, what do you think the ultimate agenda behind trying to go after everybody down their family tree to sanction and freeze their currency like is this just the the that they're trying to show that they're trying to cut off everything or is this like something greater behind all this you think well, I uh, was talking to you before we started that um, I saw a video about a year ago about uh on bold and bankrupt and he was yeah. in the donbass area and mm -hmm. he, he entitled it war torn area so they have been at war there for a long time and he was speaking with a, an older lady a grandma and she was very eloquent very mm -hmm. uh articulate and she said yes we're only uh the serfs in the middle you know in the middle of a battle between the you know our our masters mm -hmm. and that uh, that was uh in donbass uh, she was referring to ukraine and russia i guess yeah and it's the same thing for us we're pawns in the game mm. and uh and i think our masters they basically come to a head mm -hmm. you know the west and the east and they're yeah. uh and they're gonna throw everything um at russia maybe china and vice yeah. versa i just saw a tweet that uh, uh, the Russian government has advised uh, Russian companies not to export fertilizers. We've already seen it's not just oil, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, energy market is going to crush Western Europe, the UK. It's yeah. probably going to hurt the US economy as well. It will definitely hurt the US economy because no doubt. one yields drop massively today. Uh, mm -hmm. Despite the fact that we had a big, a really good non-farm number, which I think is irrelevant in, in the scheme of things. So yeah, <laughs> we're, we're just ones of the game, and uh, we need to like uh, batten down the hatches and uh, hopefully protect ourselves because they don't care about us. Uh, right. They might seem to uh, port want to portray that through the mainstream media and through politicians. But uh, yeah, we're yeah, the game is rigged. Like uh, the game is rigged, and we're in like in uh, <laughs> and we are literally at the bottom of the of the pyramid. So one thing I've been pointing out, you know, on my little rants at night sometimes is this visual aid here, where uh, I talk about what I say the pyramid of power, and this is the current monetary world order in a sense. And so if you just look at the very bottom, you know, what's what's the biggest portion of this uh, pyramid here? 
And that's said, of course, at the bottom, and it happens to be the yeah. debt slaves, those that are, you know, the primary holders, believers uh, of the currency and product, financial products we've been given. And then right on up, you know, to the, as it says here, the world financial control, central banks, IMF, World Bank, Bank of International Settlements. And beneath them is all the corporate corporate entities that basically use, uh, you know, the, the currency to profit at the, at the people's sake right on up to the top of this uh, pyramid here. So th this is what, you know, the current world structure, in my opinion, looks like. And, you know, we're, we're at the bottom. So we're the ones supporting all this up. And once we realize what we what's been done to us, hopefully, you know, we, we outnumber them. But uh, the clock is ticking. I, I heard someone talk about this structure once and they said, if the sheep at the bottom or us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, move away from the pyramid, the pyramid will collapse yeah. because we're at the base as well. So right. um, and I've. You, you spoke about the uh, oligarchs and the wealthy Russians being mm -hmm. um, like closed out. I, I yeah. spoke to my sister in Switzerland. She said the Swiss are freezing <laughs> all the Russians' bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably listened to Bo Pony and people like that uh, yeah. with their prophecies and like a <laughs> biblical uh, biblical forecast. And they talk about a total, uh, how can I say, transfer of wealth and that the mm -hmm. very wealthy will have nothing as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not just going to be the Russian oligarchs that are going to lose everything. Maybe the uh, American and European oligarchs, <laughs> they never use the term oligarch, yeah. oligarch uh, for uh, the, the very wealthy in the West, but they are oligarchs. And also maybe the Chinese oligarchs, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're going to lose a lot or maybe everything too. Who knows? Yeah. Right. But uh, totally agree with that pyramids <laughs> structure though. Uh, and speaking of which, you know, the, 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 the way you worded that particular quote there, it's actually scriptural in nature. And so it's in Proverbs because I ran about this the other day, but it says a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And so, that's the like the yeah. biblical side of that. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because there has been a lot of, uh, you know, since 1971, mm -hmm. and especially since two, two, 2008, there has been a lot of, uh, I would say, wrongfully acquired wealth, ill-gotten well, ill-gotten Ill gains on behalf yeah, of the people. Like, uh, like they've drained the debt slaves dry, yeah. like, and that's where the that whole yeah. narrative about income inequality and even politicians come out. The wealth gap is so large. We have to do something about this. We have to, you know, focus on financial inclusion and making sure that the unbanked can get banked. It's like okay, you're trying to figure a new way to drain the sheep is ultimately what you're trying to get at. And of course, it's going digital. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> speaking of which, here, here, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to say because in 2008, yeah. uh, the right thing to have uh, happened would have been for Wall Street and uh, the major international banks to have been allowed to collapse. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they were uh, rewarded. And yeah. uh, so I guess that links back to that mm -hmm. uh, a biblical uh, uh, proverb that you yeah. uh, just showed. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, so let's acknowledge the super chat real quick, and then we'll jump through all the rest of these articles we got. Uh, the Thunder Sound says this is an attack on a material wealth world. Why the idea of what a, a wealthy person is will be re redefined not by possessions but access to freedom. I can deal with that. And, and also, I was mentioning that you know, outside of the narrative, the oligarchs, the elite, you know, they're freezing their 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 funds. They already knew this was coming, so they already have stashes in their island bots on some. You know, people in the billionaire space, they got lands and properties that, you know, are in the corporation's names and their friends, friends names. And so they got they got surplus somewhere. So they're not really hurting. But it's a, a lot of that is a narrative on the mainstream uh, well, to make sure that they are losing something. They lose. They, they, they're definitely losing. But I don't think they're hurting. In a, yeah, in a sense. because I think the Western oligarchs as well, they have a lot of their wealth offshore. So mm -hmm. if you even though they're talking about in London because uh, London is an offshore tax haven, mm -hmm. not for uh, for the people who live here, but for the Russian oligarchs, for all the other uh, Middle East uh, sheikhs. Yeah. They they uh, put their money, uh, let's say, in the British Virgin Islands right. under uh, 
sell companies and they become benef uh, beneficiaries of the, the, those companies and they buy property in London. Right. And that's why we've central London the, the property press is so uh, expensive. But now the government is talking about uh, having uh, new rules that the people behind these companies are going to have to show their faces. Uh, mm. I'm not too sure if that's going to happen because a lot of the people from this country are also playing that game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, time will tell. But, you know, to move along, move right along. For those tuning in, definitely, you know, hit the thumbs up button, show your support for the channel, throw out some questions or whatnot. We'll definitely jump on it. Uh, but let, let's talk about uh, even though the, the the billionaires might not be suffering as much, I'm sure it hurts to have your, your funds cut off, but I'm sure they were well prepared and they had a heads up. But uh, the people who did not have a heads up, your average, you know, your average mom and dad is working hard, trying to provide for their family, doing everything they're told to do in order to protect them, uh, provide for themselves in the future. And when you see stuff like this, Russia keeps stock trading shut in nation's longest closure. Uh, so, so far we're going on, uh, looks at me, see, so it looks like, uh, since ultimately probably last end of last week, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they started off this week shutting things down. And, uh, so that definitely emotionally speaking, when you look at your portfolio and it probably says, you know, either hasn't moved or it says login error, can't, uh, can't access, you know, you know, your funds at this current moment. Like, you know, how do you think your average person feel? And that's, that's millions of people. In Russia, yeah. and what can we learn about that on this side of the, of the pond, you think, as well as in well, Europe? You know, I, I'm not too sure how uh, big mm -hmm. uh, the uh, culture of uh, being in the stock market is in Russia. I would say yeah. it's probably a lot less than the U.S. and Europe. So, yeah. yes, I think there will be people hurt there, but I think the majority, vast majority of Russians probably mm -hmm. don't have money in the stock market. What they're yeah. probably more concerned about is uh, their bank accounts and the the value of the ruble? Yeah, which is his concern. And then also, did you also read about uh, the delisting of Russian companies off of a lot of major uh, uh, exchanges? I think the the, the stocks STOXX, and I said the M MSCI, the uh, Emerging Market. Uh, so it's like, okay, so here's the thing: once all this is done, how do you undo it? Like this is, I mean, this is like these are some these are some measures that I don't think has never been seen in the developed in the developed world, in the modern world. The, the fact they're literally delisting companies, trying to literally isolate them completely. How do you cut that back on? And so that's why I'm concerned that this is not just a temporary fly by night situation. This is going to be a long projected experience that will have long term consequences. And then we talk about that uh, uh, that the little let me show this little visual aid here. That, I mean, not today, but this uh, article you sent me and how the currency swap lines and all that detailed stuff is at play because on the other side of all the contracts, somebody's supposed to be receiving funds and vice versa. And if there's, you know, freezing stuff and the SWIFT activity is not flowing smoothly, because uh, I remember they said something about uh, uh, doing 2020 when they locked down and shut down things, the flow of credit and all the swap detailed stuff, you know, led to major events. How can the, what's going on now with Russia being isolated from the world not also equal or lead up to major events supply chain wise and everything like yeah. that? So, yeah. um, supply man. chain wise in the real world and also in the financial world, because a lot of Western investors have probably a, a lot of money that has been frozen in uh, Russian investments mm -hmm. and, and uh, they might have to liquidate Western investments. And I think that's why the stock market is still quite volatile. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But then also at the, just to summarize this little, you know, blurb up here, it just talks about the importance of paying attention to the, 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 the currency and credit flow. But then also at the very bottom, it mentions how, you know, gold is king. Gold is uh, immune from this and it's going to force more nations to have to do some, some real tough decision making as to, you know, what they're going to keep in their reserves when they see what's happening in Russia. Like, you know, it's just not going to be isolated to Russia because if you jump on ship with them or think or try to think outside the box in the way that they're uh, probably doing right now in Russia, we have something yeah. that could uh, make you rethink that. So it's going to drive yeah. more people into gold ultimately. So <laughs> and, and I speaking wanted... of gold, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. No, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, I was going to say, speaking of gold, let's go ahead and just look at, you know, the last seven days in particular. So I got just a seven day chart up here, gold and silver. And at this current moment, as we're speaking, 
Uh, it looks like a lot of people are, are, are thinking very highly of this uh, <laughs> of this particular asset, <laughs> given all the world well, and things like that. I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, maybe, well, you could say it's geopolitics and Germany. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. Germany? Well, I, I think uh, it's because, you know, Germany is one of the biggest economies in the world. I think it's yeah. you've got the U.S., China, and then uh, Japan and Germany. Mm -hmm. in the top four and uh, Germany has been becoming more and more uh, not dependent but they've been trading a lot with uh, with Russia mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Americans even in the previous administration they're not keen on the Germans uh, getting that uh, Nord Stream 2 yeah and, uh, if you go back if you go back to history uh, mm -hmm. I think it was McKinder, Halford McKinder, he uh, termed the phrase uh, the, the world island, uh, yeah. the, great, the great game. And I think Brzezinski uh, was a student of that kind of uh, geopolitical strategy. And mm -hmm. uh, basically it says that if you control uh, Asia and U Eastern Europe and Central Europe, you control the world. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, this crisis has got a lot to do with that. They're basically, I think, uh, you know, the Anglo-American empire saw uh, we can't let Germany and Europe uh, tilt towards Russia and, and, and uh, China. And I think this is what this uh, crisis is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it's going to end up because I saw that uh, the German chancellor Schultz was on the phone today with Putin. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Uh, it, it could be the last... Uh, no, a hail Mary. We, we we could see this maybe as a hail mary pass mm -hmm. by by the Anglo American Empire, which is totally indebted, leveraged, mm -hmm. you know. But look at the uh, mainstream media and everything. Uh, it's the end of Russia, right? A am I right. bringing up Russia? No, I'm just trying to observe, and right. I think it's not, it's not like set in stone. And I think uh, we're gonna have to wait probably years to to see the consequence of what's happening today, and it right. could be. It could be, uh, it could just, we could go back to the world prior to the, you know, how it was during the uh, Cold War. Mm -hmm. We're going to have uh, the West uh, on one side and uh, the East, maybe South America, who knows, on another side. Yeah. And it would be a completely different world. I don't think it would be, you know, capitalism versus communism. It would just be two blocks. And the globalization that we will have today will be like uh, something of the past. Yeah. And then also uh, just man, so much, so much you mentioned right there. So I, I want to bring you, I'm sure you're aware of it, but I want to bring uh, in regards to the energy and, and uh, side of things. So as a result of that Nord Stream 2 being put on pause, reading through this story here, it talks about how uh, the possibility of filing for bankruptcy because I think half of the total 11 billion or so that was used to try to put this up. I don't think they've even cut it on officially. All the, all the, the, the funding for the infrastructure to get this going, there are some problems. And, you know, I think gas prime put up half and then there's about five or six other, uh, you know, big entities throughout Europe that uh, may end up falling victim to this. And that's just more, more bankruptcies going around more, you know, less debt being paid, less, you know, all that other stuff is going to cause have a ripple effect. So, uh, and also it's going to lead to higher prices for sure in Europe. <laughs> yeah. And I think we're going to have a lot of corporate uh, bankruptcies. Mm, yeah. So we could see the corporate bond market, even though uh, treasury and uh, government bond yields in Europe are going down, which means mm -hmm. bond prices are going up. We could see the corporate bond market get into trouble. But yeah. the thing about Nord Stream 2, the operators of the people behind it might go bust, but mm -hmm. the pipeline's still there. Right. Very true. Very true. And, and speaking of speaking of oil, uh, and of course, we're gonna get to the questions and thoughts. I forgot about you guys, but want to get all these get get this rant out the way, so we can uh, just jump on the questions as we draw towards the end and later on. But uh, to speak of oil and energy, like I always mention, you know, oil, the oil space, just the energy itself itself is. The essence of life is the it's the bedrock of how this world spins in a sense you know if it really spins mario but um <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna get on that because we have some some good discussions behind the scenes but um pay attention to what's happening with the opec nations if the western power structure puts pressure on the middle east 
to uh, jump on the, uh, the the bandwagon of sanctioning and cutting off Russia, then we're gonna really see some fireworks <laughs> with the, uh, the 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 price of oil moving forward. But as of right now, this article here talks about how just this past week, this is mid this is midweek this week, how the Saudi Crown Prince stresses importance of OPEC dealing call with Russia's Putin. So they're trying to make sure they remain relatively tight despite all this. And Saudi wants to be the mediator between Ukraine and Russia. They're saying we could we could all sit down and work this out. But that's 14 other nations in this OPEC plus that um, have not jumped on the bandwagon either, including Mexico. <laughs> They're not jumping on the bandwagon. So yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> so it's uh pay attention to what happens to the Middle East because that's uh something else to really show how this is uh gonna play out. So all right, let's keep moving. Uh, what else we got here to touch on before we get to questions? Uh, let's talk on here's something that people should also keep in the back and front of their mind. This is uh, that little uh, visual aid from Tavi Costa you, you, you sent me about silver. You know, once again, we're hearing a lot about the chaos in the world and nations running to gold. But don't forget for the average Joe and Jane that it's, you know, aware as well. Make sure you, you know, continue to see silver as a great opportunity because it is still the cheapest it is the cheapest uh monetary metal of all time at this current moment so and this is tavi's way of saying some of the primary benefits of having exposure to this little piece of silver metal op opportunity here so um all right let's get to some questions if you don't mind mario i see some uh super chatter too let me jump on that yeah Super chat there. If you see, yeah, if you see any questions or something, feel free to jump oh, on it. Uh, Chris Conman, thank you. Says, is the Fed trapped by the euro dollar? Thanks. What do you mean by the euro dollar? I, I mean, um, euro. You know, the euro dollar exchange rate. Um, that's the you know what how many dollars the euro buys. Yeah, the euro is very weak uh, right now. But there's also something called euro dollar, which is completely different. It, it was all the dollars that flowed uh, after World War II through the Marshall Plan into the international market. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's maybe what he means. Uh, are they trapped by the euro dollar? Uh, well, those dollars are flowing outside uh, the U.S. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe they are because if... Uh, people who hold dollars outside, they, they start leaving the dollar. People like Russia, China, and other countries because they don't want to be susceptible to sanctions. Yes, we could see a lot of dollars flowing back into the U.S., dollars that have never been to the U.S. And yeah. uh, that means a, a, a bigger supply of uh, dollars uh, flooding into the U.S. That will mean rising prices. It's what happened to... Uh, all the uh, all the sterling that flowed back into uh, into the UK w w yeah. once they lost World War II. Um, I was, uh, you know, of course, Je I think Jeff Snyder uh, is the primary uh, smokespin and seems to be somewhat relatively extremely knowledgeable about the whole euro dollar system. And just watching a couple of his past interviews uh, talking about uh how the, the the canary in the coal mine that no one in the western world really focus on is the euro dollar system and how it has far surpassed uh the federal reserve's ability can uh, ability to contain it from their own operations just because how out of hand things are and how unknown all of the yeah. activity and those in uh, the plumbing through that is uh, really I, is. Uh, euro dollars are just dollars tra traded basically in uh london in the city mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or Frankfurt and Paris, you know, the the term LIBOR means mm -hmm. London Interbank Offered Rate. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think a problem the Fed has, too, now is the the weakening euro and, and all the other currencies. Uh, mm -hmm. They might have to open swap lines so uh, so that those countries can bo uh, take dollars <laughs> to protect their currencies yeah. uh, like in 2020. But uh, yeah, the euro dollar, I mean, um, yes, they used to, you know, the euro bond market is, is part of that. And that's been a, a huge uh, bond market out, outside the U.S. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't really looked uh, closely. I know how the euro dollar system works. Yeah. And in that context, I think it, it could, I don't know if the Fed's trapped, 
uh, with mm -hmm. the euro dollar system. Maybe maybe that's why they they've kept rates uh, relatively high compared to other countries because they they want people to hold on to those euro dollars. Right, and so that, that just it just show it, it just adds on to the complexity of this whole monetary shenanigans that's been created. To where you know it's a possibility that you know things have gone grown so out of hand that it's hard to keep track and maintain. You know they got you know the, the Federal Reserve and all central banks might be shuffling a lot more than they probably anticipated because they once again they're just mere men and women <laughs> that uh, just went along with things in order for themselves to get hired onto these institutions. So they really don't know what's going on because stuff was always passed yeah. to them. And they're just trying to always kick the can down the road to the next to their predecessors. So, you know, confusion I, goes on. <laughs> the thing is, I don't think it's something we need to concern ourselves with. The average yeah. investor. Yeah. Uh, I think the thing we need to concern ourselves with is that uh, it's going to get worse in terms of the cost of living. Uh, we we thought uh, prices were rising quite a bit in the last mm -hmm. twelve months. I think it's going to get even worse. And I don't yeah. think there's any let up. This uh, crisis with Russia is historic. Uh, and and uh, some people are comparing it to the 1970s and stagflation. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot worse, unfortunately. Right. This right. is huge because in the 1970s, uh, if you remember, uh, half of the world was on another system, the Soviet Union, the Chinese. They yeah. weren't part of our system. But now the whole world is. Right. And uh and, and at that point, at that point, majority of the nations still had their own gold reserves. Like they, everyone was not solely 100 percent on the fiat currency standard, or in a sense, heading towards the because uh, they still had a little. Of course, you know they were still in the Bretton Woods system, but they still had gold, of which now they've they're all running back towards gold for some particular reason. So I'm anticipating and thinking that they realize something is coming. A, a redefining moment of this current monetary paradigm is is coming. And I think it has a lot to do with the BRICS nations, and that's why I keep an eye, a close eye on them. But uh, let's uh, – I got – man, I'm more, man, I got so much stuff to talk about. Let's uh, – uh, real quick, Super Seems to appreciate you. says, Pfizer, data release is, is the true news. Wake up. And so I, I did see information about that. Once again, too many stories to cover at once, but I realized that they did dump a lot of information at the request of the jet, federal judges here, but I haven't dived into a jet. But I, no I doubt, that. nothing good comes from that. You know what I'm saying? I saw opinion. that, and I think there's a lot more to come out. I think they are going to do it over eight months. It was supposed yeah. to be over 75 years. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw that there are nine pages of, uh, they call it adverse reactions or side effects. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I know that is big news, uh, Super Seamster. Um, we try to focus more on the finance. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm aware that, uh, you know, What's happening now is a huge uh, relief for uh, Western leaders. That's why they're pushing it so much, because people uh, were starting to get really uh, angry about what, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the government in the West were doing to them. So they backtracked completely from that old crisis. <laughs> They've lifted almost everything. Mm -hmm. But now uh, they're not giving us any time uh, to really go after them yeah. they're keeping us it's the old divide and conquer you know they're they're creating uh a new enemy yeah and, uh yeah everyone's uh they they're trying to save their skin skins that's what i'm trying to say i'm yeah. not saying putin is good or anything but it, it's the way it's been uh pushed right very true. And then I see somebody in the chat mentioned the uh, what do you say? European stock market is getting crushed right now. Uh, yeah. So let me, I was actually looking at it. it's a lot of red out here, Mario. <laughs> well, I noticed the Dow though was only down two fifty. Now it was down about five hundred. Uh, the European, yeah. I mean, the FTSE. Uh, I think a few weeks ago is at seven thousand six hundred. We are now at seven thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, the DAX, you know, the German stock market. Uh, yeah. That dropped from like, uh, let's see, beginning of the year was at above 16,000. Now it's at 13,000. So, yeah, they, they are getting crushed. It's not surprising. We, we've got European uh, natural gas prices. Uh, they topped at 165 euros or whatever they're priced in uh, yeah. late last year. And now they're, I saw it this morning, it was almost at 200 yeah. after going back down to 70. Uh, yeah, Europe is going to be the big loser 
uh, mm -hmm. from the crisis. And I think that's what <laughs> the Anglo, uh, you know, the Americans want because they don't want Europe strong and uh, uh, yeah. trading wow. and, and having good relations with China and Russia. They want to break that. It's the old uh, Eurasia, you know, world island. <laughs> you can't yeah. have. You can't ha let let uh, the world island be in charge if you want to be the world power. Yeah. And that's this is all about the fight right now. Right. Ah, man, man, man. Let's keep it moving. So let's uh, get to more questions. Let me uh, thumb through there. So feel free, Mario, to thumb through there and see if you see something that stands out. A puppet masters learn Mandarin? Question mark. New world order winning? I don't know. There's a lot of confusion uh, people, some people think Putin's working for the World Economic Forum. Who knows? Yeah. As I said, we're pawns in the game. Uh, low blood pressure asking Mario, when are you leaving London? Uh, I don't have any plans to leave London. It's pretty f nice over here. You know, I yesterday I played golf. <laughs> um, uh -huh. things all right so far. So, yeah. uh, um, uh, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and the weather's about to change. Spring is about to come, and yeah. then that's going to definitely change a lot of people's. Uh, it's plans the old as well. saying: grass is green, greener somewhere else. Yeah. But uh, no, there are some places I have in mind, but it it, it would be more in the future. Yeah. But uh, actually, I'm going. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be able to go visit my uh, my uh, family in Switzerland, my sisters and my mom. Yeah. Uh, in March, I think in in about ten days. That's so good, because man. they lifted all the restrictions. So I'll be there for a week. Yeah. Uh, so. Speaking of which, is so somebody mentioned, you know, Putin and Putin is a part of the whatever, whatever you mentioned that as well. So I was always this past week, you know, bringing people, bringing people's attention to this, how, you know, if you've done if you made an appearance at the World Economic Forum, you, you are aware of the overall agenda long term. So yeah. ultimately by going there, you're condoning or supporting and showing support toward the individual in the middle and it, talking about the fourth revolution of that book he's uh, holding up and that's the old, overall ultimate agenda that they're trying to execute right now in my in my opinion and so yeah uh i think we're in the probably you know first second inning uh, of their long-term 10-year yeah. plan i think so and i think all these guys are actors you know and that mm -hmm. um and we are the pawns as i said and talking about the the end, end game, uh, I saw a headline that Australian banks, they're like uh, shutting Ooh. shutting ATMs. off thousands of ATMs. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's where that's where they warn us because uh, David Rockefeller, and this is not a conspiracy, he said that in his memoirs that the, uh, he, he's not like, a, he's proud to say that he, he wants a world where there's like a, a few people running it and that mm -hmm. the bankers in charge, you know, uh, a class of uh, enlightened bankers yeah. and globalists. So, yeah. I mean, doing this, uh, if you have basically, we've gone from having gold and silver that you can, you know, coins that mm -hmm. that quite private, and then yeah. we into now paper money, and now they want to get rid of the paper money that's worthless anyway, mm. and uh, keep us uh, keep us in a digital prison. <laughs> Yeah, Mario, the evolution of currency. Look at this. This is uh this is a history of the current reserve currency of the world. And it's been an agenda all along because you just look at the changing colors showing you how this was all part of the plan towards heading digital because we're running on fumes right now when it comes to that narrative of no one uses cash anymore. You know, everyone's just taps and swipes. And so we don't need cash. What's the point of having cash? Because it, it costs to have it printed. OK, yeah, sure. This was a part of the plan from day one. But. It yeah, doesn't cost to get printed. It's very cheap. <laughs> yeah, like uh, ten cents, like was it five cents a note? Yeah. Ten cents a note or some well, crap. The reason they the bankers want this is that they can control us and they get a cut of every transaction you do. You know when you use your card. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so when you use cash, when you use cash, you don't. They don't get anything. Yeah, and let me. So let me just touch on this real quick. So uh, I was earlier this week ranting on uh, ranting about this. With just this, like from a white paper, somebody put together this demonstration from a white paper uh, from the BRICS Council, Business Council, and it shows an outline or a map of the possible digital financial structure that the BRICS nations will have in the future. And even in this, even in reading the white paper, it talks about their ability to still receive their fees off of small transactions when you tap, swipe, whatever. So, you know, as long as they get their cut, that's going to ultimately be the 
the the agenda. So don't you know you don't need paper or whatever because they already have that baked into the cake. But if this yeah. turns out the way that it's listed here, then you know it's the change well, of the old and into the new, but it's all the same. You know, I think there is a, a solution, mm -hmm. and it could even be digital. And I'm not trying to uh, sell anything. Yeah. But for example, Glint. You know, Glint yeah. the Glint app. Right. They have something called Glint it. And you mm -hmm. can't use it yet yet in the States. They're still trying to get the uh, 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 regulatory approval. But basically, you can send people gold mm -hmm. just as easy as sending a text and then outside the banking system. So if, yeah. if someone, uh, if I did a video for someone and uh, like a promotional video and they said, oh, I want to pay you in gold mm -hmm. outside the system, they could. And, and we could also have maybe private uh cryptocurrencies gold backed as yeah. well and you just that's a that's a way out of the system and we could see a world where you have uh maybe even private uh cities you know uh, mm -hmm. and i think they have some of that but it's the very wealthy like in yeah. places like uh you know uh offshore places yeah so yeah, yeah, there is a way out for the very wealthy but and we have to try to maybe emulate them right um it, it's it, it, and maybe they they might succeed or they might might not who knows right and i think uh you know definitely utilizing technology will be of use to a lot of people because there are some viable options out there but one of my concerns with with the current amount of pressure and stress we're, we're seeing in the coordinated events by all governments entities financial institutions against russia it, it it also concerns me about moving forward because ultimately we know that the agenda by these individuals on the screen here if i put that up here again the whole world and economic forum their agenda is to make sure you own nothing nothing and are happy with it so that means my concern eventually is going to be property rights you know how how will they try to remove uh the 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 the, the how people are trying to free themselves from their stranglehold how will they then clamp down through regulation by calling you you know you're you're, you're a terrorist to the to the nation because you're using these other options and you know it's not secure we want to make sure it's secure in your bed so all the ways they try to sell their products to us i can see them posing a threat to all options such as what you mentioned with glint because that, that's gold stored somewhere so the the things in between you got to make sure you're confident in that and yeah. i just think like it's so much unknown moving forward where you know it's hard to mm. question from low blood pressure he asked if glint is available in mexico i'm not sure if the glint card is available but i think you can open a glint account uh you can you have the app in mexico mm -hmm. and uh fund it mm -hmm. you, you'd have to check go go into maybe glintpay.com uh yeah i'm not sure i, I think uh you might be able to download the app in Mexico, uh, but uh, you know they're they're still expanding, uh, yeah. looking to go uh, worldwide. I don't want to mm -hmm. say the word global, right, Mike? Yeah. yeah. And also speaking of Glenn, I'm not familiar with, it, but I know with uh, with gold money, bit and bit bit gold turned gold money. I was a member of that for a while, and having a car that was issued from the UK, I had ability to, to swipe, spin all around the world. Even even in Cuba, it came in handy in Cuba because I couldn't use my U.S. stuff here, but I was able to use the European card. So I would assume it's the same thing that it, the, the card itself issued would be able to use be used uh, anywhere. The mechanism is a, a lot more uh, streamlined mm -hmm. because I think with gold money, uh, if you want to spend your gold, you have to put it into the fiat. Right. Oh, oh then, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, now, now I don't know nothing about gold money. With Lint, you can uh, actually spend the gold if you want. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it does the transaction fx yeah. transaction like in milliseconds yeah yeah once uh once gold money went public in canada that's when i realized that you know the games that rules of the games was changing because their uh terms and conditions also changed and i read some of the fine print and i wasn't a fan so i you know removed my gold mighty quickly but uh all right uh let me see here any more thoughts questions out there man this is uh mario this is so much stuff I'm yeah. sure we have not touched on that we can. How many viewers have we got? Uh, say that again. How many viewers have we got? A lot uh, of two, as of now, 245. So yeah. for those plugged in, make sure you hit the thumbs up, show your support for the channel. Uh, uh, that's another thing, Jim I, Willie. I haven't heard from Jim Willie in a yeah, while. To start reading the questions. Huh? Say that again, Billy. <laughs> you have to teach him how to read. <laughs> so uh, so 
here's something as well that I did see before we went live about uh, Shell uh, buying uh, some oil for 28.5 a barrel. And so I guess that there's a lot of the the, the ports, all the sh- all the, the the ships and tankers and stuff like that that has been frozen as well. I assume I don't know 100 percent sure. I assume is this has something to do with that or not? I'm, I don't know, but the, the the Wall Street is definitely going to benefit off of this asset seizure because they're going to be the ones coming in, swooping up things at a very cheap manner. And, and speaking of which, you want to just touch on this article real quick uh, before we get Redow back that you shared about um, mm-hmm. more of that. Uh, uh, restructuring because of these all the, the sanctions and stuff like that. Yeah, can I just answer a question from Tony yeah. Blaylock? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm uh, Marco, but it's Mario. It doesn't matter. <laughs> can you explain why the dollar is rising at the time of war? The results of a rising dollar to other currencies. Well, uh, the dollar is actually rising versus the uh, fiat currencies like the euro and, and sterling, mainly mm-hmm. because Europe is going to be. Uh, hit harder from this uh, uh, uncer- you know, conflict with Russia. And the U.S., of course, is on the other side of the, the ocean. And, and the U.S. still has, uh, you know, still the premier power in the world yeah. uh, economically and, and uh, militarily. So people flow to the dollar. Uh, but uh, if you look at the dollar versus real things and versus gold, it's going down. So don't be fooled by the dollar strength. I, I think I saw a tweet by, uh, I forgot his name, and he said someone predicted in 1998 that when the uh, whole fiat currency system collapsed, that the dollar would be the last one to go. And he's right, because the dollar is at the base uh, of the fiat currency system. But below the dollar, uh, I guess, you guys should know what's below the dollar by now. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's yellow and uh, also uh, shiny silver. Mm. I would say. <laughs> uh, good stuff, man. Uh, let me see. So, yeah, of course, the narrative has changed over the last 72 hours. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you had some thoughts about Biden's little State of the Union address and how there's so much, so many, st- so he, much stuff in there yeah, that was he, not fact checked. He's concerned but. about the Iranians, isn't he? <laughs> I, saw right. that. I was surprised he lasts for an hour long without many blunders <laughs> because he attempted to get off script once or twice and then went back to the monitor he's like no i can't do that <laughs> well, actually i have to listen to it because uh i don't i don't need biden to tell me the state of the yeah the state of the world basically we can just <laughs> see it but uh but we can feel it good. it's good uh entertainment yeah, I must say it is. But uh, all right, so we're about 47 minutes. Uh, appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, hopefully, you know, you guys was able to process and help decipher through some of the some of the noise out there. But uh, once again, next week, a whole new week, Federal Reserve week coming uh, next you know, week and a half, give or take. So we'll find out how what's going on with that and tighten taper. What we, we're going to see. Uh, but <laughs> what are you going to say, think- Mario? I think they're going to do 25 and maybe mm-hmm. uh, one more and they can't do any more. The bond yeah. market uh, yields are dropping quite sharply and the bond markets are basically because some people think the Fed controls interest rates, but uh, longer term rates are controlled by the markets. Yeah. And right now they're saying, you know, uh, no way, Jose. <laughs> yeah. And I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, ex- I think Canada did a uh, half a point if i'm not mistaken or a quarter or half a point and uh let me let me actually we can just check in real quick before we dial off on who who's been the most active thus far when it comes to uh having made some moves so we got canada interest uh they went up yep a half a point mm. uh, no, a quarter point quarter point i'm sorry russia of course they went up you know 11 11.5 it looks like you know from 9.5 1, 1150 basis points yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hungarian went up as well. New Zealand and Mexico did a little blip up. Poland, Britain, uh, the UK, you guys uh, check. Brazil went up. South Africa did a little bit up. So a lot of banks are, you know, deciding to, uh, you know, try to, I guess, fight inflation with these quarter rate hikes. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, we'll see if the U.S. is on a list next. But as of now, Jerome Powell said they're still adamant on doing such. But he's concerned because of the war. So we'll find out if, you know, the whole overall tightening plan changes. But you know how it plays out. They're going to just draw bonus to death. But um, all right. Well, everybody, we appreciate you for blessing us with your presence. Uh, have a great weekend. 
go out and do something fun, spend time with your family, friends, stack, get your weight up, get your calories up, you know, continue to do everything you know from a practical standpoint. And don't forget to put it all before the Lord. Let him uh, guide your steps. So, uh, Mario, any last things you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, just uh, keep your uh, heads down and uh, try to avoid all the noise and uh, follow uh, Mike's advice. I think what Mike, what Mike said is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good advice, so I won't have to repeat it. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, as always, be blessed, be safe. See you later. Peace. See ya.